Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, did you know there's a skill many men never learn that ends up seriously limiting your professional success and satisfaction in your love and sex life? I put together a free guide to explain this unknown skill and give you exactly what you need to use it today. Get it by heading over to shanajamescoaching.com or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144. That's 44144. You'll also get access to Man Alive outtakes, raw footage, and bonus videos you can only get there. Welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I decided it is time, actually I've been asked for this, to let you in on some of the really powerful learnings that are happening in my sessions with clients. And it's kind of like being in the trenches, right? So um, what's actually happening in these sessions and what men are actually learning and then what they're taking back into their lives. And one of the sessions this week was an exploration of how do I be an emotional man? How do I let a woman in on my inner world and the feelings I'm having and still seem manly or powerful, you know, still give her the impression that I'm a strong, grounded man in the world and that I'm not one of her girlfriends, but I'm a man who she could choose. This is if you're dating or um, if you're in a relationship, it would be slightly different. But if you're dating, it would be that she would choose to actually, you know, be lovers with, be partners with, that she would feel this draw and this attraction. And if you're in a relationship, it would similarly be, you know, that she wouldn't fall into this sense of, oh, we're just friends and, you know, I love him, but I'm not feeling that spark, right? So how do you be emotional and not have to hide what's really going on for you? How do you not have to put on a mask that everything's okay and I've got it all together and at the same time still feel your own power, right? Because this is not just about you seeming powerful to a woman. This is not just about you being a certain way for her to be attracted to you or want you. I mean, that's great when that happens, but primarily where I like to focus is on that intersection of where you get to feel your own power. You get to feel great about yourself and simultaneously a woman feels drawn to you or, you know, whatever your relationships, right? Again, I often talk about heterosexual because I am a woman, but if you're in a relationship with a man that he feels drawn to you as well. So what is it that has someone feel drawn to you and attracted in that spark while you're also bringing these emotional parts? One of the things I've talked about in a few of my courses is this idea of head, heart, and the third one I often call something, uh, a couple different things. It could be body, it could be sex, it could be you know balls, that sense of having balls, having strength. So this head, heart, body balance. And I so often find that men who come to me have their, let's call them their, their, their different dials, right? Have the dial on their heart turned up. I care about women. I respect women. I feel like I want to um, support women. I want them to be happy, right? Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you're emotionally available or emotionally intelligent. That's adding a whole nother dimension to the heart dial. But as you're starting to let women in on what's going on in your heart, some men think, um, I should turn that down, actually, right? I should turn down my care. I should turn down the part of me that is... Um, wanting a woman to be happy. That's wanting to support a woman happy. 
And what I've seen over the years is that actually what's best is not to turn that dial down and act as though you know it needs to be 33% head, 33% heart, 33% body. It's actually that all the dials need to be at 100%. And so you start to turn up that dial on your body. And then you create this spark of attraction and desire along with the safety that your heart creates. Right? Your head can create a different kind of excitement. And when you're in your clear mind versus what some might call your monkey mind, then you actually have access to deeper conversations, um, to a kind of intellectual stimulation. But most often what I'm working with with men is the heart and body balance. And most often, I would say even beyond that, is that men come to me with their minds working, though often a lot of monkey mind, um, their hearts working, though not necessarily as much emotional intelligence or availability, right, but this care. And then the part that needs more attention is waking up your body, the ability to be clear about sexual and sensual desires and actually feel good about them. A lot of men come to me with a lot of shame around sex and shame around desire and trying to turn down that part or turn off that part so that people around them, women around them will feel more comfortable. And what I work with with men is actually turning up the volume, turning up the dial on the sexual sensations you feel in your body, the pleasure you feel in your body, the desire you feel in your body, and the distinction between feeling and action. So just because you're feeling desire doesn't mean that there's anything offensive about that to a woman. You're not... um, you're not abusing her. You're not attacking her. There's, if you're not doing anything with it, you're just feeling it inside of yourself. There's nothing bad about that. It's your own vitality. It's your own energy. It's your own aliveness. And so you get to feel that. And actually you feeling that is a part of what has a woman see you from across the room it's a part of what has a woman you know, sit across the table from you and actually feel this spark of desire and attraction. Because as I've also talked about in my courses, it's like we're tuning forks for each other. So if you're sitting across the table from a woman and you think, wow, she's really attractive, but I can't feel this desire because then it's going to do something bad to her. You know, My feeling desire is going to do something bad to her. Or somehow my feeling desire gives her the upper hand and makes her more powerful if she knows I want her, right? All of these are these conflicted ideas we have where we think that something inside of us can give someone else a kind of power. And really it's about you taking back your power and you being able to hold on to all the parts of you, right? I desire you but I don't need you to be happy or I feel attraction to you, but you're not the only woman in the world who I'm going to feel attracted to. And this is not with a closed heart, a defensive heart. A, it's not a fuck you. It's not a, okay, you know, I'm attracted to you, but I don't need you. It's more like I'm attracted to you and I don't need you for my own happiness And so that does mean actually having to find that place inside of you where you can have your wants, you can have your needs, and you recognize that you have to be able to be happy. You know, you have to be able to find that place of peace inside yourself without this person in front of you. One of my colleagues a long time ago said, a relationship is a horrible place to try to get something and a beautiful place to co-create something. Now, what is true is that we are all trying to feel loved and 
feel cared for and have fun and play and sensuality and sexuality. I mean, we're all, we all want all of these things, but when we're trying to grasp for them in this other person, or when we think this other person is our only avenue to have that experience, then we start to, it's like we start to hold a flower too tight in our hands. We start to squeeze it and we start to squash it. And we start to, you know, squash the life out of something. So there are many things I'm covering in this even short recording so far. One is the not turning down the dial on your heart, but actually turning up the dial on your body. Another is that you can feel your desire, your attraction, the pleasure in your body, and it's not bad for a woman. It's your actions, you know, that, that are either respectful to a woman or not respectful. It's not your feeling. Um, another is, another that I think is important actually, is the difference between emotionally dumping on a woman and emotionally expressing. So when you imagine it's like you've got a potato, a hot potato in your hand and you're feeling some kind of emotion, right? You're feeling some kind of, uh, let's say one of my clients was talking about, you know, the ways that he feels with his family, the ways that he can sometimes feel angry or insecure or, you know, there's a lot of emotions that come up (laughs) for most of us in relation to our family. And he was talking about that with a woman he was on a date with. And this was where the concern came from. How do I still make sure, you know, that I'm, I'm also bringing my strength? I'm also bringing these other parts of me. Uh, and so one piece of this is, like I said, the emotional dumping versus emotional expressing. So if you've got this emotional expression, we'll call that the hot potato in your hand, and you throw it over to the person you're talking to, to the woman you're talking to, and it's like, Oh my God, you know, I, I can't be with this myself. It's too much for me. It's, um, I'm being thrown around by this. If you're not actually in touch with the other parts of you, the parts that are centered and grounded and recognize, okay, this is, you know, my emotions are part of me, but they're not all of me, which can happen sometimes as you start to first feel your emotions. It can be really overwhelming then we can try to get rid of our emotions and put them on a woman and not feel our own centered place versus emotional expression, right? When you're doing it in a balanced way is kind of like, all right, I'm, I'm holding this hot potato and I'm going to find a way to hold this as I'm talking about it, as I'm sharing about it. You know, I'm going to find my pot holder and I'm going to keep it in my hand. I'm going to feel the heat of it. I'm going to feel the burn of it. And I'm going to talk about it as well. I'm going to let her in to what's happening for me over here as I'm feeling the burn. But I'm not trying to get rid of it. I'm not trying to put it over there so she can take it or so I can feel better. Right? We don't even necessarily recognize we're doing that. But that's part of what's happening when we're dumping and trying to get rid of something versus we're able to feel it as we're sharing it. When you can combine sharing your emotions or sharing the more vulnerable parts of you with the recognition of your own strength and your own power, when you can combine your heart, you know, turn up the dial on your heart and turn up the dial on your body, it is really exciting. You know, I'll just speak from my own personal experience. There's a way that I feel safe when I know that a man is actually in touch with his own emotions. If he's not feeling his sadness, his anger, all of those things, I start feeling afraid 
either that A, he's going to explode at some point or he's going to have a midlife crisis or some kind of meltdown. Right? He's going to be overtaken by all the stuff he's been avoiding. Or I start to feel like I can't actually bring all of these parts of myself because either he's going to try to you know, fix me or make me try to get back to happy or he's just you know, going to think I'm this overly emotional uh, woman who's too much. So when you can start to bring your groundedness, your strength, which really just takes knowing that in yourself, finding, I mean, a lot of what I do with men is help them find that belief in themselves which turns into a kind of confidence. It's not a bravado confidence. It's a kind of confidence of, actually, I do know I'm an amazing man. I trust myself. I'm in integrity with myself. I believe that my desires are good. When you get to this place of that kind of awareness of yourself, that kind of strength in yourself, and you can share the more vulnerable things in your heart without thinking you need to put up a facade, right? Without thinking that when you feel your own strength, you have to be strength, you have to be strong all the time. That's when this new kind of connection happens where women can simultaneously feel, whoa, like I said, I start to, I feel safe. And then I also start to feel this awakening in my body, this sense of, wow, With this man in front of me, I can feel my emotions, I can open my heart, and I'm safe to do that, and I'm also then safe to start to open my body. Okay, there's so much more I could say, but I think for now that's enough, and I want to give you a practice to start to integrate your heart and your body, to start to turn the dials up. And again, so that you can feel more alive and so that the intimacy and the spark can build without you really having to do much. Because when you start to turn these dials up, when you start to be aware, when you start to have a deeper relationship with these parts of yourselves, you you feel different from the outside. You feel more alive. People can feel that. So if being in touch with your emotions or your vulnerability is hard for you, I would say the practice is to start with trusted people and start sharing a level deeper, right? Take us, this is a small step you can take. If someone says, how are you doing today? And you usually say, fine, no matter what's going on, share something else, you know, share I'm doing well and this morning, you know, was rough because of this or I'm doing well and someone I I care about is sick or, you know, share something that's a little bit more vulnerable where you're actually letting someone in on your life. If your heart is open and you're good at that part, and you could do both of these practices, right, if you're working on both of these. If your heart's open and you're used to sharing more vulnerably, but you feel ashamed or held back in your sexual desires, your sensual desires, you've got to start to bring more acceptance to that part of you. And so I would start to, you don't even have to share this with anyone, but start to make a list of some of your desires. And recognize, I want to give you this perspective that as long as, this is again the difference between action and desire, right? Or feeling the pleasure inside of your body versus acting on it. As long as you are being respectful, as long as there's consent, there's really not a problem with any of your desires. We all are unique. We all have different desires and fantasies. And so you can start really looking at those and recognizing my desires are good. What I want is good. Some of them you'll realize you never even want to act out. You want to keep it in the world of fantasy, in the realm of fantasy. 
Some of them you'll realize you actually do want to act out, but you're going to do it with the consent of another mature adult. If you want to share how these practices are going, if you're feeling challenged, you can fill out the form on my website. You can contact me. Let me know how it's going. And I'll be back soon with some more learnings from client sessions. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope it gives you a sense of what's possible and how good your life can be. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe to Man Alive and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash manalive to get outtakes, videos, and raw footage I only share there. These are some of the most interesting parts of these expert conversations. You can also grab your copy of The Unknown Power to accelerate your career and solidify your confidence with women because the two are related and I know you don't have to settle for one or the other. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.